And I want to have a discussion, Brian, on Superman. Um, of, of what you think needs to happen. I have, I've been thinking about this, like, on my days on the bus going to work, I think about this. What does Superman need to be? What does he need to look like? What does he need to be? What makes him Superman? Um, Cavill will have his chance to show us that. He's been throwing out his little, little words, these adjectives that he's using to describe what Superman we're going to be seeing. What do you think that's all about, Brian? So this, if you haven't had a chance to see it, it's online. Henry Cavill went to the 92nd Street Y in New York. They did a live show podcast with Josh Horowitz. I think it's called Sad But Confused. Or silly, but sad, but confused. I think it's a podcast. Horowitz is like a, he's a film geek critic. In which Ca it, for Cavill says, he describes it as, you know, a joyful Superman. That's the Superman he's bringing back. Yeah. <clears throat> well, he said, he talks about the journey. He talks about that promise. And then Horowitz says, it's the show. It's like, Henry, I got a surprise for you. And he types in Zack Snyder live. Ooh, oh, snap. right after he said that. And Zack has a question for him. And he's very, he's like, you know, you're the best Superman. I just want to know that first day we strapped you up on the wires. What were you thinking? But it was a very like softball question. And Cavill says, God, I love that man. And I was like, well, you just trampled his image <laughs> as Superman 10 seconds before you knew he was going to be on camera. I thought it was one of the most hilarious. Like, he clearly didn't know it was coming. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, I don't know if he would have said what he said. But it goes to my point of clearly Henry Cavill has heard, you know, the critique of his brooding Clark Kent. And he wants to do away with it. Who knows if he wanted to do away with it back then? We don't know that. Yeah. But he clearly wants to do away <laughs> with it now. And that's all well and good. But here's my question for you in the context of what we're talking about. Who is at the controls of this movie? If you had to lay money right now, do you think it's that this, this Superman movie is going to be a seven bucks rock produced Superman? Or do you think this Superman is really going to be shepherded and handled by James Gunn and Peter Safran? I think Henry Cavill's going to have a lot more say. But he's represented by The Rock's ex-wife. So does that put it, does that lead you to Camp Rock? No, I okay. think Camp Rock is of those individuals who want to see what their dreams come true. Do what you want to do. Right, do what you think is dope, right? Yeah, and I don't, I don't think the Rock and and Henry have that sort of relationship. The Rock does what he does, and Henry Cavill most likely sees that or sees this as an opportunity to do what he, he wants to do. Um, they got him back. I don't think it was a they asked him to come back and he's back. Or they, I'm pretty sure there was some negotiation happening. I think with the character of Superman, this is the that joyous part is that that joyous adjective is not by mistake. Is 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 yeah. a very purposeful word that he used. You know, uh, I think this is the Superman that he wanted to do, but and I'm quite certain that he had conversations with Zach in terms of what he wanted to portray. But Zach had a, a clear vision, and Henry, being a pro, he yeah, did what I he agree. had to do. We've always said that. Yeah, so I think now this this is again, Brian. You don't get a second opportunity. Yes, this some you know this is once in a lifetime again. He, that doesn't happen. Yeah. So now that he's here, you know I think he's going to have a lot more say in terms of what kind of Superman he wants. He will, but there's so many cooks in the kitchen on this one because remember David Zaslav. This is his favorite character. This is the character he has publicly said on earnings calls at conferences. 
this is a top three IP for him worldwide, and this is his number one priority. So you got the CEO of the company watching this one closely with a personal stake in this happening. So that's another voice in the room, which matters a lot. You also have, and I don't think this should be underrated because we've heard the Chris McQuarrie name come up a couple of times. We know he went in to pitch an idea a couple of years ago, and we know that that pitch was done in conjunction with Henry Cavill at the time. I just bring that up. They worked okay. together on Fallout. So Cavill has loyalty and they kick whatever idea they cooked up. It was cooked up on the set of that movie. They went into the studio and it was rejected by the old administration. Now, Macquarie is not going to be dancing to the Rock's tune. He's not a Rock guy. So this is what I mean by watch how this movie comes together from a production perspective because everyone's pulling on this one, I think. Now, I agree with you. Like, The Rock, at the end of the day, his primary concern with Superman is Black Adam 2. Right? And you could argue that maybe Henry Cavill can do both. But I think it's awkward if he's playing a different style Superman to foil Black Adam versus the one he's going to be playing in his own movie, which I believe will have no connection to Man of Steel. That's my, my belief is this is really Superman 1 with Henry Cavill. It's a complete restart with the same actor and they're going to disavow whatever happened to Man of Steel. It's going to be like that. You saw that movie that never went in. That whole thing went to an alternate universe and it never happened. That's my. But with 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 regards to Brainiac, here's one of those villains that he appears and is gone in one movie. That's hard to. You know what I'm saying, Brian? I totally agree. Which means I don't think he he can't he can't he can't be. He can't be. They've done, they did a a great job in. Justice League Unlimited, having Lex Luthor and Brainiac work together oh. and having that, that was a long series. Um, and how how all that ended was fantastic. I saw a clip of it the other day. But well, that that should be the Justice League move. That, I'm serious. They just did everything from question authority to divided we fall in that series. That's a mm -hmm. great movie. I don't yeah, they don't yeah. have to do anything. <laughs> anyway. So, having said that, I'm not so much excited for, for them. I, I, I like the, the word brainy. I like the way they're thinking. But if this is just a one and done type of situation, they're doing a disservice to Brainiac. Anyway. But, but again, who's thinking that, right? We don't have a formal writer. We don't have a formal director. Who's thinking? Already we're hearing rumors, right? It's like, you're right. Cavill has opinions. Everyone has an opinion on this. This thing, they need to be real careful, right? If there's too many cooks in this kitchen, this movie is not going to do well. This movie has I, to have vision. I, I think Henry Cavill's opinion will be more towards the character himself. It's, it's, he, I don't know. I don't know if there's a specific uh, storyline he wants to go with. The storyline that I keep hearing is Man of Tomorrow. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure Harry Cavill wants to play a specific Superman. I'm pretty sure he's inspired by Christopher Reeve's Superman. I, I don't know if he'll take some inspiration from that. But whatever say he has, it'll be towards that. And obviously, he's going to want to make sure that the story being told is going to be good as well. But yeah. Um, I don't know how much of a say he'll have in that, but in terms of how he plays Superman, I'm pretty sure he's going to feel strongly about that. 100%. We can save it for a bigger discussion there, but I want to yeah. bring it back around to James Gunn and then bring it back around to Dwayne Johnson in the wake of Black Adam. So James Gunn, you know, you and I have mixed feelings about him. He has some very high points. He has some misses. This is a little different role for him. James Gunn, not so much as writer and creator of his own product but as overseer what what do you think of what how do you think he's gonna do in, in this role of sort of being like i don't know the idea the, the, the kevin feige creative side the idea man and sort of the editor for and the gatekeeper for a lot of this stuff do you think he can do it um i don't doubt that he can 
My concern is, can he deliver a product that it's going to be well received by the majority and not a small fan base? You know what I'm saying? Um, he says one thing that I, it just keeps repeating in my head. And he says, I don't want to be bored. That's what he keeps saying. What does I don't does I don't want to be bored looks like Peacemaker? <laughs> does it look like the Suicide Squad? Although it was praised by critics, and sure you can blame the day and date, but I still think even still that movie wouldn't have made it the the, the type of money it made with the first Super Suicide Squad, which sucked. So. Can he do it? I don't know. I, can he give us a successful, a, a, a successful first two, three movie outing, Brian? I don't know. I think for me, the biggest question is tone. I mean, James Gunn so far has really has he. I mean, you can you can watch a an episode or a movie and say, that's a James Gunn production. You, it, it's readily identifiable. Sometimes that's great. Sometimes that's a little uneven, but I know it's him. Does he have the range to perceive when that tone is appropriate versus when other views are needed? That's my biggest question. I, I just haven't seen him uncork like a truly dramatic take on something. Um, he's tended to go light, snappy, comedic, over the top, sensationalist stuff. And sometimes that works really, really well for the right characters. It worked great for Guardians. Uh, critics loved what he did with the Suicide Squad. You and I, probably not so much. Peacemaker, very well received. You and I were kind of mixed on it, but a lot of people loved what he did with, with the show in sort of its irreverent nature. But as we know, that doesn't apply to like you, like, you know, Matt Reeves got Batman under control, but if they wanted to do another Batman, which has been rumored again. Batman doesn't fit into that. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't think. So yeah. that's my question is, can he switch and wear different hats? And I, I don't know. We just haven't seen it. I mean, maybe. But, you know, and that's, just and, seen it. that's That's what I'm concerned with. That's what I'm concerned with. Now, I got to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. How do you think Dwayne Johnson reacted to this announcement? Given all his talk about wanting to be an advisor and wanting to direct DC, help help guide DC into the future, how do you think he took this news? Um, not well. I don't know if he's. I mean, he 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 hasn't been very vocal as of late, Brian. We haven't gotten a lot of quotes. He hasn't been out in the news as of late, Brian. You mean since Have the you, movie came out? Since the movie came out. I'm pretty sure he's listening to whatever you want to say, Brian, or everybody out there, whatever you want to say, the reviews for this have been harsh. And deservedly so. So he's been quiet, and the box office has been middling, looking like we're going to be end. We're end up about four hundred to four hundred fifty million global gross tops, which is and a it's money gonna, losing movie. The Rock losing money, unheard of. On a big budget film like this with Superman in it, unheard of. So The Rock definitely feels, and, and then this, and he's losing the control he thinks he has, but he's losing it. That's my reason. And I, he's probably having conversations. People are probably picking up his phone calls. Who knows? I guess but, another uh, way to put it is this, right? So who knows when this was signed? Obviously, we know it was pretty recent because the Dan Lin talks fell apart weeks ago. It wasn't months ago. So here's my other way I could look at it. 
if Super Pets had done north of 500 million global instead of the 200 million that it did, and if Black Adam had come out and was tracking to north of 700, 750 global, do we get this announcement? Because the timing of this is interesting. It hits right after Black Adam comes out and kind of does meh at the box office. Brian, if this movie, let's say this movie is still what it is, garbage, right? And it still hits those type of numbers. I think the executives would ha- in charge that would make that decision would have to really think about giving control to someone who once you've given that control is really hard to take it back. And if the movie makes that m- amount of money, look, I mean, what was the, the, the Rotten Tomatoes score for a Suicide Squad? Original Suicide Squad? Yeah. David Ayer? Yeah. 26%. That's the, that's the low. That's the nadir of the and, DC uh, film. And 800 made, million global. 800 they, million global. So you have to say this movie, Brian, should be in that range, Brian. And it's what is that 30 something? It should be. Yeah. So I they would have to decide, listen, this movie was horrible, but it made mad money. Do we want to make mad money? and be known for making horrible movies, I, you would have to ask yourself these questions. Because if you go over to Marvel, Marvel doesn't really, they start into, we'll see what happens with Wakanda forever and then Quantum Mania, but they were, Marvel was on a roll for a minute, averaging a billion dollars. And getting, you know, 85, 90, percent plus critic scores and a a remember they had a stretch where there was only one audience score that was below an a minus right so they were getting that consensus acclaim but yeah i think at the end of the day it's a bottom line business right like if if the zack snyder movies have been cranking out north of a billion consistently we still have the snyderverse today like make no mistake right I don't, don't tell me that that would have, like, Joss Whedon would not have been brought in. I, I mean, rest in peace, Autumn Snyder. They, he would have, they would have found a way to, like, get him to finish that movie on, t- like, on time for 2017. If those movies were made, if Man of Steel had been 800 million, if BBS had been 1.3, there wouldn't have been questions. I don't care what the critic score was. So that's why I asked the question of like, if Dwayne Johnson in his pocket this year and on his resume had, hey, I have mega hit in the animated world, Super Pets. I got a mega hit, Black Adam. I think his odds of getting control would have been higher. I think- Higher, but he ultimately wouldn't have done it. Maybe not, but I mean, I think his, I think the timing is interesting that like, his two big pushes this year in the genre both were disappointing commercially. And right after that, Warner Brothers finalizes a deal with someone else to run DC film. I don't know. Timing seems interesting to me. To kind of say we are not, we might still be in the rock business with Black Adam, but WB is not going to be run by Dwayne Johnson when it comes to DC properties. Yeah. Yeah.